YouTube artists, this is Jeannie, and I'm coming at you right now with a video on how to construct a basic canvas. Now, making your own canvas is something I definitely recommend to artists. A lot of these canvases that you get from Walmart or even from the art store are good. They're, they're a decent platform to put your artwork onto, but we don't know how many coats of gesso are on there. We don't know if it's been sanded down, and we don't really know how the frame has been assembled. Now, I'm not going to lie, I'm a cheapskate, so I started doing this because of cost. But once I did it myself, I learned how much better my canvases were compared to what I was getting from Walmart or even from the art store. Now, this does require an initial investment, and I don't have the exact amount, but I will put it here. In the long run, it's worth it, and I will show you why. This is a painting that I made pretty early into my current art journey, and I was rediscovering my skills as I went along the way. This canvas is something that I likely purchased at Walmart, and I'll tell you why I feel like it was from Walmart. Um, the surface of this painting is not what matters. It looks like how I wanted it to look at the time. What we want to look at is the back. So, I mean, not too shabby, right, in concept. But something you'll notice here is the placement of the staples, which is erratic in some places. Like, look, we've got a couple real close over together over here, and then these are spaced so far apart. And um, the canvas itself almost feels like paper. Not even paper, like almost like you put gesso on toilet paper. Um, the edges are all curled up, which is something that could be from age and moisture. Um, it feels kind of brittle, and you'll notice it's a little saggy. Now, if I am to, and please don't do this at home, press on the surface, you see these wrinkles and bubbles it's making. And this is something that if I want to keep it in good condition, I may have to restretch in the future, and I honestly don't know if I can. This canvas feels so brittle and thin, I'm worried that if I take it out, it's honestly just going to tear. Part of the reason why I want you to stretch your own canvas and prime your own canvas is this right here. I don't want this to happen to your paintings. I'm not sure how well you can see it in the lighting but it's no longer an evenly, tightly stretched surface, and it's not even that old. This is something I completed not actually all that long ago, so in fairness, there's not yet been the age to wear on the canvas itself. But you're already going to see some improvements. If I press on the surface here, we have even distribution. There's no wrinkles or bubbles that pop up. And when we turn it over, this was one of my earlier canvases, actually, and it doesn't look too bad. Um, there's a lot of excess fabric on this that I could have trimmed off, uh, but the staple placement is pretty good. So definitely some areas I could have improved on this one, but we've got more fabric to work with. We can feel the density of the fabric, and I know that if I ever need to restretch this, it's not going to wither away and die. So those are the differences between store-bought and homemade canvas. Now, you might have a store-bought canvas that looks better than mine, so it's not always going to be like what you just saw. And there are good store-bought canvases out there. I'm not saying that you can't buy them pre-made, but in the long run with the cost saving and the quality control that you have over making it at home, I think it's worth it. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to go over some basic tools that you'll need to make a canvas. And the most important one is going to be your stretcher bars. Now, I picked up these stretcher bars from Blick online. I like it because it comes straight to my door. They're a little bit cheaper than the ones that I can get in the art store, and I think they're higher quality, they're heavier. I have two 24 inch stretcher bars, and I have two 16 inch stretcher bars, but you're going to be using whatever is right for your project. And next up, we have our second most important tool, which is going to be our stapler gun. So there are multiple methods to adhering your canvas to your stretcher bars. I choose to use a staple gun. The ones involving the glue are a little bit too complicated for me. This is easier, this is affordable. Next up, we have our measuring tape. So we're going to be using this to make sure that our canvas is assembled evenly. 
Oh, how could I forget this guy? I don't know. He might be the second most important tool to the stapler gun. These are canvas pliers. So these are used to stretch your canvas over your stretcher bars. They're important because they give you some leverage, a bit of a mechanical advantage, and you can get it as tight as possible before adhering it to your stretcher bars. Now, I know there are artists out there who stretch without canvas pliers. If you're a beginner and you're not very familiar with how to stretch your canvas, just do yourself a favor. Buy a pair of these guys. They're about 20 bucks. Now, if you'd like to find out which tools I'm using specifically for this project, just look in the description. Everything's going to be there for you. The last and probably least, if we're being honest, is our hammer. So I just use this to smooth out any staples that didn't go into the stretcher bars very evenly. You can use pliers for this as well, and just a heavy object to smash them down, but eh, let's be real, that hammer is a little bit easier. With that said, let's begin. Okay, so to start with, we have moved our stuff off to the side. We are going to assemble our stretcher bars. Now you'll notice there are stickers stuck to the back of your stretcher bars. If these bother you, you can use a hair dryer to heat them up and peel them off without leaving any residue. However, if you are lazy like me, be your best you. So these, you'll notice, have a little notch on each end. They actually fit in together. So there's no tricky work here, no gluing. So you're just going to fit one end of the notch into another bar. Just like so. Now, when you finish up, it's going to be a little uneven. That's okay. We'll fix that in a minute. Go ahead and grab your other bar and do the same. Okay, you can just give it a little bit of a tap. Again on the other side. And we have our roughly assembled frame. Now you'll notice these gaps here on the ends. That's no good. We are going to straighten that out. So now our hammer is going to come in handy for another reason. Simply just sit it on the side. Give it a couple of taps. Cool. We're going to stand it up. Do the seam on the top. On the other side. Staples on each corner, and this is just going to 
hold your frame in place so it doesn't shift around when your canvas is attached. We want to make sure it stays square. Good, just like that. Do the same over here. our basic frame all assembled in place. Now that that's done, we need to measure out the canvas we need for our frame. And I just realized I neglected to mention canvas is one of the tools we need, but I feel like that'd be a given, given that this video is on stretching canvas. Okay, so here's my blanket of canvas. I've already cut into this a little bit, so it's gonna be a bit uneven. We're gonna set our tools up to the side here. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty big blanket and it does take up space. It's not usually the easiest way to measure out your canvas on a kitchen table. If you're looking for an easier way to measure out your canvas, you can just put it on the floor. As long as your floor is clean, you're not going to have to worry about ruining your canvas and it lets you spread it all the way out. That way, you're not having to work with too many folds or wrinkles. Well, much, much easier just doing it here for the sake of this video. The easiest way to measure out your canvas is really just to put the frame right on it. What I like to do is have about two inches margin on each side of the frame. And that ensures that when we wrap it around, it covers your bar all the way. Now you may need more or less depending on how deep your bar is. Mine looks like it's three quarters of an inch. I can double check on that and put it here. So the easiest way to measure out how much canvas you need for your frame is to put your frame right on the corner of your canvas blanket. Now we're going to need an extra margin of support on your canvas so that you can wrap it all the way around the frame. So while this is 18 by 24 inches, we're going to need more than 18 by 24 inches of canvas. Easiest way to determine how much margin you need is to grab the edge of your blanket, wrap it around your stretcher bar, and as long as it passes the edges there, that should be enough for your project. You can also keep in mind that when we use our pliers, it's going to stretch this canvas out, so this is going to come out a little bit further. Now, as you're starting out, don't push it too much. Give yourself just a tiny bit, maybe a quarter inch past each edge of margin. That way you're not running out of canvas. You also want to measure out how much of a margin you have on each edge so that you're having an even coverage all the way around. Mine usually comes in at two and a half, I believe. Yeah, we're at two and a half. And now that I have these corners measured out, it's time to determine where our cuts are going to be for here and here. So I'm measuring out two and a half from the top of the stretcher bar. Now, you can use a pencil to mark off where you need. I just eyeball it. But since this is going on the back of your canvas, you're not hurting anything if you leave any marks on it. So feel free to do that right here. Now, canvas actually tears straight, so you can just Grab a little edge here. Canvas doesn't tear easily unless you have scissors. Right then, so one other thing you could potentially need is scissors. I still happen to have canvas scissors, but you can use whatever scissors you like, it does not matter. Right, when you've made your 
cats, fold up the remainder of your blankets. All right, this is where we get to the good stuff. So you can clean up any loose strings that are hanging off on the edges there. Those can get a little bit annoying. So we're going to center your canvas with your frame. Now, options here. You can go ahead and just iron out your canvas. That's so going to make it nice and flat, smooth out any of those wrinkles. I haven't found this to be necessary in my projects. That could change in time. You can tell me if I'm wrong, but most of these wrinkles get pulled out when you're stretching it. That said, if we're not gonna be ironing it, I do want to give you another option. Introducing my second tool that I did not mention in the beginning of the video. Good old spray bottle with some water. Um, all you need to do is just wet down the back of the canvas like so. Mist over it a little bit. You don't want it to be soaking, just lightly moisturized. And that will allow the fabric to stretch out a little bit more as things do when they're wet. I have stretched canvases before without using water and nothing terrible happened. But it's not gonna hurt you if you do have a spray bottle nearby. So we're centering our frame in our canvas. You can make sure it's centered by just pulling the edges over like so. Or if you're really strict about your measurements, use that good old measuring tape there and make sure that it's good. There we go. Perfect. It begins. Oh, you know what I almost did? Pro tip, make sure that your stretcher bars are facing the right way before you begin stapling. Now that that's fixed, we're going to begin by making a single staple in the very middle of whichever stretcher bar you're starting with. Just press down. All right, now we're doing the same thing for this guy over here, but this time we're using our pliers. So you see that little notch there on the bottom? We're gonna push that against the edge of our stretcher bar while we're pulling on the canvas, and that's going to make sure that it's nice and tight. And we want our staple to be directly across the one that we just placed. Now, to make sure it's getting as tight as possible, you just grab those little teeth onto an edge, pull, and then you can pinch that in place, move up a little bit, and pull again. That makes sure that it's nice and secure, as tight as we want it to be. Now from here, we're going to switch. So flip it around this way, and the reason why we're doing it like this we want to secure what I'm going to refer to as the anchor points before moving across the rest of the canvas. All right, now that we're nice and secure, we're going to repeat this process across the frame. I'm going to show you the first next staples that I'm going to make into the canvas and then we're going to go really fast to speed things along. So from here what you want to do is you want to move out from your anchor points and then across. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're going from this point right over here. That one turned out a little bit wonky so I'm just gonna give a little tap. There we go. And now instead of going to the next one over here, or over here, we're going to flip this over and go directly across from this guy, right here. Perfect. And now from here, we're going to the opposite side of this anchor point. And then flip it around and do that guy's opposite. got all of our staples run across the edges. I had a real struggle with my stapling gun today with the tensioning, but I think I've got it sorted out for now. Apologies for any ugly staples. Make yours look a lot nicer than mine. 
Okay, so now we are going to worry about our corners. So for today, we're just going to go for a basic fold with our corners. There are fancier ways to do these folds to make them a little bit more you, more signature. I found it very difficult to find a way that I liked. It took a lot of tries, and you can take as many tries as you like too. Um, every time you make a new canvas, try to fold them a different way. Um, today, let's just take it easy. So we're just going to have all of our corners pointing like this. That just makes it look a little bit more uniform. So I'm folding the corner over, tucking any excess canvas into a uniform shape. So see how it just looks like a straight line? Yeah, it looks like a straight line. All right, and now we're just going to secure this a little staple here. And be careful when you make this staple, since it's a little bit more fabric, you might need a bit more tension, or you might just need to hold it a bit firmer. Perfect. Alright, and now this guy. There we have it. Now, your first canvas, it could be a little too tight, could be a little bit too loose. Symptoms that it's a little bit too tight is if you have puckers surrounding all your staples. And if it's too loose, you'll know by flipping it over. Give it a little tap. It should sound a bit like a drum, you hear that? The good news about using staples is you can pull them out. So if you feel like you did a really bad job, go through, pull your staples out and try again. Now, if it is a little too loose, it's not going to be detrimental to your piece. So don't worry about it too much. As long as it's not sagging, you'll be okay. Be a little forgiving on these. You'll learn how to do it better in time. And you're going to just love yourself so much for having your own handmade canvases with your own chosen canvas grade that you have primed and prepped yourself. Speaking of prepping, that's gonna take us on to our next video. So if you did like this video, Subscribe, I promise I've got more to come, and in my next video, I'll be talking about how to prime and gesso your canvas. And we're not just going to be priming this canvas, we're going to be looking at a couple other different service types as well. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you did learn anything in this video, give me a thumbs up, lets me know how I'm doing. And if you have anything to contribute on canvas making processes, leave me a comment below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope this was helpful for you. I'll see you next time.